Bueno, buenas tardes a todos y a todas. Eh, bienvenidas al ITD. Hoy la sesión entera va a ser en inglés, así que voy a empezar ya eh, cambiando de idioma, ¿vale? Y así. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to the ITD UPM, uh, an innovation center inside the Technical University of Madrid. Uh, I'm Miguel Soberón, member of the integration team of the ITD UPM. And we, I'm very happy and all the team is very happy to, to have this talk today. We call this, this type of sessions, uh, we call them unlikely dialogues or dialogues improbables, because we like to uh, connect people from different places, from different disciplines, from different sectors, and have like one hour, one hour and something together here so we can see new opportunities, new synergies. And every uh, two weeks, we normally have these, these sessions and we, uh, you will see this there, the topics are different and there will be always new opportunities to meet uh, new people. Uh, today, uh, I would say it's something more than just a dialogue because it's also uh, the presentation of the of the association we're going to talk about uh, later. And I'm like especially happy as a, a person that I've been uh, getting to know Sunita and Hasib for uh, already more than a year, and we became we became friends. And to me, it's a it's a it's a pleasure. Just to tell you some uh, indications about how is it, it is going to work today. It's going to be very dynamic because we have a couple of videos we are going to play in different moments of the session. At the beginning, there will be a first presentation uh, by Sunita and, and Ignacio. I let them introduce themselves later, uh, and then there will be uh, two more interventions from. Uh, to Af Afghan uh, women, one of them will be uh, uh, yeah, with a simultaneous translation and will be presential here, yeah. and the other one would be, I think, uh, online presentation through, through the streaming. So welcome also to the people that are uh, following us online. And the idea more or less would be like the full uh, presentation will take around 35 minutes. So we have also another 30 minutes to open the floor and the discussion to all the all the people that are that are here. Uh, so if I don't forget anything else, I think we can start with the presentation. So I give the floor to Sunita. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Miguel. And thank you so much, uh, ITD team, for giving us the opportunity and for having us today here. It's a great pleasure for us to be here to present Women's Association uh, here and officially launch our association in ITD. It's a great pleasure for us. Uh, I would call your attention to see a short video of Afghanistan uh, to know more about the warriors that Afghanistan have, please. This is Bamiyan city of Afghanistan, which is famous for its Buddha. There is actually the Red Fortress uh, was famous to resist the invasion of uh, um, of one of the Huns, I think, uh, uh, in the old times. Beautiful valley that I was very happy to see. And this is actually Bandamir, which is the first national park in Afghanistan. Um, <laughs> You go ahead. Please. Unfortunately, we cannot listen to the music, which was also a typical traditional music, but I, I really uh, encourage all of you to see this video, which is beautiful and it's so, so 
uh, a lot of the amazing beauties of Afghanistan uh, in contrast to some of the images that we've been accustomed to see concerning uh, the brutality of the Taliban from some of the horrors of the 40 years long conflict. That's actually what the Buddhas used to be. There's no more Buddhas. As you may know, you may remember the Taliban's in the first time destroyed them with the help of Pakistan in 2001 or 1999. 1999. 1999. 1999. No, but when did they destroy the Buddhas? It was 19. It was the first uh, attempt. 1997. Uh, this is one of the biggest uh, dams that we have that our currently electricity we are providing from this dam, which is called uh, Mari Pat. Mm. And it's located in the Jalalabad and Kabul. Uh, this is one of the uh, biggest or largest highway that we have that was built between mountains and which connects Afghanistan center with the eastern part of Afghanistan. Mm. This is one of the lakes that is between the mountains. And sorry. the highest mountain in Afghanistan, Afghanistan. is called Kohe Baba. So this so. Uh, lake is on the top of the mountain. And this is the house that is uh, on the mountains or the hills that people are living there. And actually, this was a project of the Sunita who had to color all the houses. And if you see cobble from the other part, it looks very colorful. And this is the cobbles downtown. This is one of the biggest uh, garden of Afghanistan, which is ba Bagh Babur. And it used to be one of the castles during the uh, long time ago with empire time. And one of the mosques inside the Kabul. This is also called the downtown of Kabul, which is, we call it Kartechar. It's mostly university area of Kabul. Our flag. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, speaking about Afghanistan, uh, these days it's not easy to talk about my homeland. As you all know, uh, my homeland has seen many uh, difficulties and challenges wars uh, in the last 40 years. But uh, Afghanistan is uh, present yourself, Sunita. Present oh, yourself. Or, well, uh, um, again, a difficult a... task. It's it's more difficult to speak about yourself. So I am Sunita Nasser. Uh, Sunita Nasser Tarim is my full name. I'm a civil engineer by profession. I was working uh, for the United Nations back in Afghanistan for more than ten years. I was working in for uh, urban development and sustainable development goals of uh, SDGs in Afghanistan. And besides that, I was working for the capacity development and empowerment of women. Uh, I have been uh, evacuated by the Spanish military on August 2021. After the collapse of the government, I had to leave my country with my family, I came to Spain in August 2021. And it's been more than a year that I am living in Spain and working with a company which is called Smarten Cities, uh, which is working for the urban data analysis and uh, urban indicators. Uh, I have my great team here. And also part of my work is uh, collaborating with the ITD. Actually, we are uh, collaborating uh, together, the Smarten Cities and ITD Works. Uh, currently, I am uh, contributing to the Net Zero Cities uh, project of ITD. So that's why we are here today. And yeah, uh, we, we, uh, we are more than uh, 3,000 Afghans here now in Spain. 
and I will explain the how we get together and how today we are here we're in front of you all. So uh, speaking about Afghanistan, Afghanistan is a country uh, on the crossroad of the uh, yeah, I think I have the remote control. You want to manage? Yeah, please show. So, uh, Afghanistan is a country on the crossroad of South Asia and Central Asia with a population of roughly 41 million. And of these, uh, 21 a million are male and 20 million are uh, female. Afghanistan has been invented on uh, 1947 by uh, King Aman Allah Khan and um, uh, Ahmad Shah Durrani, sorry, uh, Ahmad Shah Durrani invented uh, Afghanistan on 1747. Uh, and uh, the country served as a buffer between the Britain and Russian empire until it won independence in 1919. A series of subsequent civil wars saw Kabul finally fall in uh, 1996 to the Taliban. Taliban are a hardly Pakistan sponsored movement uh, that emerged in 1994 and in uh, the country several war. Uh, please move forward. Uh, following the 11 September 2001 terrorist attack, as a uh, US allied and anti Taliban Northern uh, military action toppled the Taliban for sheltering Osama bin Laden. And after uh, the 11 September attack, a UN sponsor conference for uh, have been established for fostering the uh, Afghanistan reconstruction that include the adoption of a new constitution. After the uh, Bonn conference, a presidential election in 2004 have been held in Afghanistan. And in December 2004, we had our first elected democratically president, Ahmed Karzai. And uh, we had our, uh, he, well, that actually he has been re-elected on 2009 for the second time. On February 2020, the U.S. and the Taliban signed the U.S.-Taliban agreement in Qatar, which contained commitment by the U.S. related to the withdrawal from Afghanistan of military forces of the U.S., its alliance and coalition partner as well as commitment by the Taliban related to counterterrorism, among other topics. Following uh, a huge drawdown of virtually all of its troops at summer in 2021, offensive, uh, the Taliban offensive quickly overran the country and the Taliban took over the Kabul on 15 August. Moving forward, uh, talking about the women situation in Afghanistan in different era. Women rights in Afghanistan have vacillated depending on the time period. King Amanullah Khan attempted to modernize the country in the 1920s. Uh, in 1920, women officially gained equality under the 1964 constitution. As you can see, we have uh, the uh, wife of the king, uh, Malika Suraya, uh, which was the first uh, lady uh, who has uh, participated in official missions of the king. And she was the one who was uh, asking for the rights of women. And based on her recommendation, we had women in Afghanistan had the right of voting. So, uh, however, these rights were taken away in the 1990s through different temporary rules, such as the Mujahideen and the Taliban during the Afghan civil war. During the first Taliban regime, which is from 1996 to 2001, women had no freedom, specifically in terms of civil liberties. Uh, when the Taliban were removed uh, from the power following the 1911 attack in the United States, women's rights gradually improved. Under the Presidential Islamic Republic of Afghanistan, women, uh, women were de jure equal to the men under the 2004 constitution. The most popular traditional work for women in Afghanistan uh, was tailoring during the 
Taliban regime. Most of women were professional uh, tailors working from their home. Since the fall of the Taliban, many uh, of women have returned back to work. In Afghanistan, some became entrepreneurs by starting small businesses. Uh, many others are employed by the companies, international organizations, and some engage in singing, acting, and news broadcasting. A large number of the we move forward. Uh, a large number of uh, Afghan women serve as a member of parliament until the fall of Kabul in early 2021. Uh, we had the first female governor in 2005. We had our first female mayor in 2008. And in 2018, December 2018, we had Roya Rahmani in the first ever female Afghan ambassador to the United States. In September 2022, Afghanistan, uh, 2020, Afghanistan has secured a seat on the UN Commission on the Status of uh, woman for the first time, which was an achievement that's seen as a sign of progress for a country once was famous for the oppression of women. <clears throat> In 15 August, life changed for me and millions of others. The consequences of the fall of Afghanistan were a complete collapse of the Afghanistan human and financial infrastructures. With the Taliban terrorist group taking control of the country, the system that had been built over the past 20 years, with the blood of nearly 100,000 soldiers and thousands of innocent people collapsed and was destroyed. A generation that has grown up over the past two decades has opened the door to hope for a prosperous Afghanistan to move the country for a state of conflict to development. However, all these were wishes were buried overnight. After the Taliban took over of Afghanistan in August 2021, the Taliban at first gender segregated all the university classrooms as long as they follow Islamic standards. However, in September 2021, the Taliban, uh, 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 Taliban banned teenager girls were going to prevent from returning to secondary school education. And women were blocked from working in most sectors outside their health. You can see in the pictures. First, we have separate classes uh, for, we have segregated the classes. Then we had separate, the Taliban separated the classes for women and men. And in September, they said, girls are not allowed to complete their education. And in September, 2021, even they banned the education sector for the girls. Uh, who are not uh, more than six, uh, were above the six years uh, old. Sorry, Sita. This, picture that you see, uh, in, this picture that we have seen is just a. Uh, this picture that you are seeing, this is the moment that students were in the class and the Taliban came and told them that just go to home and never come back to school. So this was that moment which was captured. And from that day, September 2021, so they are not uh, able to go back to school. Uh, Black Day for Afghanistan. Uh, I would uh, call on uh, Ignacio, uh, who has been uh, witnessing uh, all the uh, situation of women, families uh, from August 15. Uh, he was the close collaborator. Actually, he has been uh, in Afghanistan for more than five years. He has the experience of living uh, with the Afghans inside the country and outside here in Spain. So I, he, will, he will explain uh, more about what happened on August 15 and how he could manage to collaborate to save the life of hundreds of uh, Afghan family. Please, Ignacio. Thank you, Sunita. Uh, as Sunita was mentioned, my name is Ignacio Alvaro. Um, um, I'm also an engineer. I'm, I guess I'm surrounded here by engineers. And I was lucky to work in Afghanistan for five years with the UN, IOM. Uh, uh, International Organization for Migration and the Spanish Development Agency, where I had the mission there for three years, um, based uh, uh, in Badguis, which is a province in northwest uh, of the country, where the Spanish troops were also stationed 
if you remember the time that was 2005 and 2010. Um, uh, I didn't forget Afghanistan, but somehow I was back on my uh, head and until 2021 where Afghanistan came back to me and through most of the, my former colleagues and people who actually worked with me uh, uh, during that time over there. And so I'm gonna tell you a little bit about what happened since that time. And, and right now we have some of these memories, this, uh, the Spanish government through the agency, the Spanish Development Agency uh, actually employed hundreds of Afghan colleagues. Some of them are present here with us. Uh, Najib, uh, you can ask her as well. And, and Wajia is actually the wife of one of our collaborators, uh, worked for us for almost eight years in, in that country. Many other Afghans also were working for the Spanish embassy and, and the Spanish military. Uh, but these ones actually were doing most of the development work, especially in Baghdad and Herat. Um, and because of that, actually, they were uh, threatened or they were considered uh, hereticals by the Taliban's, and, and most of them actually threatened uh, uh, their lives. Uh, so knowing after the agreements in 2020 that the Taliban's were going to take over the or run over the country, most of them started uh, uh, demonstrating in front of the Spanish embassy in Kabul. That picture was taken, I think, in, in May 2021. Uh, and, and these are some of the collaborators, most of them engineers, a lot of agriculture engineers, uh, veterinaries, uh, many actually females, uh, not in that picture, but they also were with us uh, during that time. And, and we're asking for our government to help them evacuate in the country. Um, so that was actually happening. I think in early August, finally, our government committed to uh, evacuate uh, Afghan collaborators, uh, as they were called. And, and all of a sudden, uh, some of us actually that work in Afghanistan, Carol is also here with me, start identifying a lot of these people who were for us. Uh, there was kind of called the list of hopes for many people. Uh, it was not only people who work for the Spanish Development Agency, but many other, I mean, for the Spanish Embassy, people who actually were very much identified with the foreigners. And somehow uh, uh, that really uh, 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 creates a, a threat for their lives and for their the lives of their families. Uh, many also working for the Ministry of Defense and some others also activists and collaborators who were working for Spanish journalists and, and were very close with the Spanish government or the Spanish society. Uh, and based on those lists, actually, we, the government uh, somehow tried to identify them and these were the people who were trying to evacuate during the month of August. Uh, this probably bring you some age. The, that was a terrible time, uh, uh, probably Sunita or uh, her husband actually could tell you much more, but it was horrible what most of these people went through though during those days. Most of them were forced to leave their houses in, I mean, in in, in hours and, and go to the airport. This actually, this was the airport. This is where actually where most of the Afghans were waiting to get in. And actually, the Spanish forces were switching. They were, as you see over there, they're like uh, 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 trying to present some documents that the Spanish government were giving to these uh, refugees. Uh, um, I'm sorry, Najiba, that this probably bring you terrible memories. She was actually going through that channel uh, and waiting in front of the uh, airport for more than a week uh, with children and, and as many others. A few of them actually were lucky to get in, uh, uh, but most of them actually remain and have been coming. Actually, we have to say, luckily, afterwards through mostly the embassy, Spanish embassy in Iran or asking for uh, through Article 38. Uh, uh, asylum in the Spanish embassy in Iran. That was a terrible time. Myself and many other colleagues were actually trying to, and also colleagues of Sunita trying to help them, mostly through WhatsApp, trying to help them uh, uh, and coordinate also with the Spanish forces, the Spanish embassy over there, or the Spanish representative. Uh, uh, it was almost a 24 seven. That ended up luckily for some of them in Torrejon where they arrived. Uh, uh, with a lot of great expectation for most of the government that unfortunately have not materialized afterwards for many of them. Uh, there were many ministers, I think Escriba, Alvarez, many others actually greeting some of the Afghans. And I have to say that the effort that the Spanish forces and the Spanish government did uh, evacuating many of these people were tremendous. But uh, the situation here has been as good as uh, some of them who have presented or who have expected. Um, Around 4,000 people have arrived, uh, 4,000 Afghan refugees. We think that there are here less than 
2,500. Most of them, or many of them, have left for uh, Germany. Uh, we actually have been, myself, I mean, uh, following as well, the refugees, when they arrive here, they get into this uh, um, program of, of resettlement uh, managed by the Ministry of Inclusion uh, with different kind of expectations. I mean, I think at the beginning, uh, there were happier news, I mean, but also the Ukrainian crisis as well has right now probably overwhelmed the system. And many of them are really struggling as, as many other Afghans are still coming. Uh, uh, the situation is not getting easier, uh, but worse for many of them, especially most of the females that are really suffering and struggling. And this is also part of the reason of themselves creating this association. Uh, uh, but in general, I mean, I could say from this, and I will not get into uh, that one of the things this is really working very well, trying to do uh, is the schools. I mean, the kids and the children actually integrating great, and this is working very well in terms of integration, but the rest of the things as employment and looking for houses is going terrible for most of them. And I let go back to Sunita and part of the situation that females have been struggling and why uh, uh, they have decided themselves because I'm here. I mean, I, I should, actually, another company of myself should be here, but uh, I'm only supported. But uh, why they have thought about this association and the importance of this association for them. Thank you so much, Ignacio. Uh, as you can see, uh, Afghans that have been evacuated to Spain are people from different backgrounds and different categories. Uh, we have the government officials who have been evacuated to Spain. We have here engineers, doctors, former employee of Spain in Afghanistan, from several society servants, journalists, and many other who came to Spain. And upon arrival to Spain, uh, they have been recognized as a refugee, the title that I really don't like. <laughs> We have been recognized as a refugee. Uh, after uh, being recognized, they, they start facing many challenges. The first challenge and difficulty was the uh, uh, in terms of diverse culture, uh, different language, and lack of job market. Uh, it, it, and th there are many uh, problems that uh, women and their family are facing. As a human being, we just don't need a shelter or food. There are uh, there are a lot of other priorities for us, like having a decent job, uh, being independent, having a decent house. Many of Afghan are living in the hostels, in the centers. Uh, that six and seven people are sharing one room. So the, the, the idea of uh, creating women association came from the daily challenge of these Afghans who have experience of uh, facing a problem with the uh, social workers from the host uh, NGOs, and they all were contacting uh, to their collaborators from Afghanistan, like Ignacio. We have uh, Maite Pacheco, uh, Christina Gayek, Kosai Baluch. So every Afghan who has a, a coordinator, a Spanish coordinator, we were uh, 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 lying to them and asking for the support to know what is going on, how the pro uh, program is working. So all of us were referring to our uh, network of friends. So. After seeing all these challenges, uh, we thought of creating a common network that we can discuss about our challenges, our pro uh, problems, and the man behind the idea of uh, creating women association is the yeah. great Ignacio, yeah. who, <laughs> who helped us uh, a lot uh, to get together. Today, uh, uh, please, uh, let's move forward to see uh, the Afghan uh, women. This is our first interaction uh, that we start from a WhatsApp group. We use the WhatsApp group as a chain of communication. In this WhatsApp group, we are more than 200 Afghan women who are in the different part of Spain. And we are communicating our challenges, our struggles, our achievements through this WhatsApp group. And with this uh, idea, we had a 
for our first meeting on March 2022. I guess it was March or yeah, okay. before, before yeah. the summer. Or yeah, before the summer. So this is our first uh, meeting. We, we were communicating through the WhatsApp group, but we didn't know each other. I, and it was the first time that we had the meeting through the video call and we saw face of uh, many unknown people. So the, this uh, association has uh, been uh, created uh, by the support of our Spanish uh, coordinators. Uh, that we really appreciate their efforts besides their uh, daily life uh, um, problems and their daily job. They are helping us to get together, to combine the ideas. And this is not just uh, Ignacio. We have uh, Cristina Manzanedo, uh, Clara Regalo, Carola, which are here with us uh, today, and Shirin Salihi. These are our uh, Spanish coordinators who are helping us to create this association. And uh, currently we are a small group of 16 people, uh, Afghan women, uh, who are working voluntarily to form this association. And we, are, uh, we have a lot of hope from uh, this association because uh, we were looking for an uh, official channel to uh, communicate our problems with the officials and through the other networks uh, within the Spanish society. So we find it easier to communicate our problems and our inputs through a channel uh, named Afghan Women Association in Spain. So the objective of this, uh, we have four main objectives and a lot of activities uh, that we are hoping to cover under this association. Our first goal is integration of Afghan women, promoting their involvement and empowering in their own process. Through informative workshops on the Spanish reception system and the rights of refugees. You wanna go just through the goals and then allow in terms of time. Yeah. So, and the second goal is creating a develop and network uh, that facilitate communication between Afghan women. And the third goal is promoting the personal, social, professional, emotional, and family autonomy among the Afghan women. The last but not the least is awareness rising of the situation of Afghan women among societies and to serve as a link with the Spanish authorities that we are here today. And uh, um, the achievement so far that we had with the support of Ignacio and the other friends that I named earlier, they were able to provide a short-term uh, Spanish language uh, class, which was provided by the unit and uh, unit university. So uh, I think we take a lot of time. Uh, I would like to call. Uh, my other friend, uh, Wajiha, uh, she will explain her testimony as an Afghan woman and her experience in Afghanistan. And before that, please introduce yourself, Wajiha Jan. Please come here. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I, I, will, I, will, I will shift. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, Wajiha will uh, speak in Dari. And we have my other friend, Vida, that she will translate for her. Wajia Mashal, as well as the Botris, the Valata Botris, then the Gimikardum, the Hamonja, the Red Talimi Hodor Payonda Sandum, but Bonja was the fame Alimiro, a drama cardum. Uh, Wajia Mashal from Badris province, Afghanistan, and I studied there my secondary uh, school and my university also. I had work as a teacher. Um, Afghanistan. 
از دست دادیم و به یکی از ولایت های نزدیک که به ولایت بادقیس بود ایراد به اونجا یعنی انتقال شدیم اونجا و از ولایت خود را ترک کردیم و چندین روز در آن ولایت بودیم Okay, I had a beautiful life in Afghanistan before Taliban took the power. And after that, uh, I lost my job. I lost, I lost everything. And I moved to another city that's near the Badghis province is that named Irat province. با اینکه قبلا شوهرم با امرا اسپانیا کار کرده بود به ولایت بادقیس و بعدا توسط خود سفارت اسپانیا به اونا ایمیل شد که به کابل بیاین و بعد آمدیم به کابل مدت پنج روز به کابل بودیم و با بسیار مشکلات وارد میدان هوایی کابل شدیم تا اینکه به اسپانیا انتقال یافتیم Uh, as my husband worked with uh, Spanish government in, in Badghis province, um, after Taliban took the power, a Spanish embassy sent an email to my husband that we are going to evacuate you. And then we moved to Kabul. After five days in Kabul, we were um, with very difficulties. We were able to um, go out from Kabul and, and uh, came to Spain. به اسپانیا که آمدیم زندگی خوب و آرامه داره که ما در فامیل پنج نفر زندگی میکنیم من و مشاور من و صدان طفل من که دو داشت دختر است یکش بچه و فعلا اونا مصروف یعنی تعلیم خودم و ما و شوهر من زبان اسپانیایی میزنیم و بعضی مشکلات وجود داره به زندگی ما اینجا که به امید یاری الله باید اونا امکان داره که حل شه که از آن جمله یکی پیدا کردن خانه که خود ما تا فعلا به فاز اول قرار داریم یک سال و هفت ماه شده که آمدیم باید به فاز دو می رفتیم به خاطر که خانه پیدا کردن نتونستیم به این فاز اول قرار داریم و یک سال میشه که در جستجوی خانه هستیم هر قدر که جستجو میکنیم و هر جا که مراجعه میکنیم فقط بر ما میگن که قرارداد کاری باید داشته باشیم که اور متاسفانه نداریم چون زبان تا حد یاد نگرفتیم که بتونیم مثلا یک وظیفه چیزی پیدا کنیم و بتونیم قرارداد کاری داشته باشیم <laughs> okay, when we are, after that we came to Spain, uh, I have a good life uh, in my family. We are living five persons, my, me, my husband, and my three children. Uh, to our... Uh, to uh, my two daughters and my one son, uh, my children are going to school. They have a very simple and beautiful life. And me and my husband are studying Spanish language. Um, we are the difficult, the challenges or the difficult things for me and my husband is that we uh, still we can't find a house. Because uh, whenever we are searching for a house, they are asking for a job contract. And we don't have job because we don't have, uh, we don't know perfectly Spanish. And that's why we can't find a job there right now. و با این ده آرزو می اینه که خود ما از بخش قضا و سرانوالی فارغ شدم و آرزو می اینه که به یک وظیفه در بخش وکیل مدافع داشته باشم و امیدوارم که به این آرزو برسم. دیگه یک تشکر خاص میکنم از دولت اسپانیا که ما رو حمایت میکنه. Uh, as I have law degree and my for future my wish in Spain, Spain is to find a job as a lawyer and to have a good life and also I appreciate and I'm thanking the Spanish government for support us and for bring us here in Spain. و فعلا که یه انجمنی که قرار شروع به فعالیت کنه یکی از جمله هزای او انجمن می باشم که به نام افغان ومن اسوسییشن این اسپین و از این طریق می توانم مثلا به خانم هایی که در اسپانیا هستن و پناهنده هستن به اونا کمک و همکاری کنم and right, right now i'm a member of afghan women association in spain, spain. and uh, i want Uh, I want to help other women through this association and I want to just go back. <laughs> yeah, I want to help other women, Afghan women through this association. Thank you for your attention. Thanks for your attention. Uh, before continuing uh, with our uh, second speaker, I would call your attention uh, to watch a video. Uh, 
uh, a short video which shows the transformation of women's life in Afghanistan from uh, <coughs> So you can you can see the Afghan woman, as I said, in the Taliban regime, the only field which was suitable for women was tailoring. And after uh, the first presidential election that we had on 2004, women start back. This is my friend, which uh, she has a boutique uh, by the name of Lemon, and she the owner was a woman entrepreneur and. You can see in the mining session we have. University life, student life in school. We had women singers who were performing concerts in Afghanistan. of our national golf team. <clears throat> Thank you so much. Uh, uh, we have another friend who is joining us online from Barcelona, Masuda Kuestani. She has been an uh, activist, woman activist back in Afghanistan. And currently she is studying in uh, uh, her master in Barcelona. Mm -hmm. She was. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Masuda Jan, uh, uh, and mute Konin to gapoy shumara bishne. Mamnun salomat o shin suni to jor ma English ka pesan mi oiske forsi. As we have our uh, this session in English, it will be good to have your uh, speech in English because uh, we will. It will take a lot of time to uh, translate for you, someone, if possible, please. Uh, thank you so much. Yes, it is no problem for me. I can uh, speak English. Uh, thank you so much for such a opportunities, uh, which. Uh, that organization organized for us that we should at least talk about ourselves and uh, the question which was raised just shortly, I'm going to talk about. Uh, but uh, more, than, more than 80 years, uh, my professional experience in Afghanistan and more than 12 years, my experience uh, with, the, with the research organization as a researcher and then after the peace negotiation, I became active member of Afghanistan, uh, Afghanistan Women uh, Network within the Afghanistan that I was uh, responsible for the uh, coordination of the meeting with the uh, political leaders and international organizations uh, within the Afghanistan. At that time also we had other group of uh, active women 
that we organize like a peace negotiation uh, among the uh, rural level and the peace negotiations uh, uh, with uh, which they participated to with Taliban. So we somehow we connect them with the women uh, through online conference and through a practical conference uh, uh, with the people in different uh, province such as Erot, Kabul, Nengahar, Balkh, and many other provinces that we organize uh, this, this kind of uh, conference due to uh, advocation of, of women and women participation to the peace process, which suddenly, as, as you know, uh, that we lost everything. Despite of that also, um, I was an article writer like a social and political articles uh, about the women's uh, woman position and women's uh, situation in Afghanistan, which is all uh, you can find in uh, academic page. And some of them are also published through LinkedIn uh, too. Uh, and also I was active active member of AWNs and I uh, practically participate to the uh, social media and through uh, national uh, TV to the peace discussions. Uh, whenever, whenever, whenever the TV organization or TV channels want some woman to talk about the woman and different from the woman, right? I was participate not only in the TV channels, even to the international radio, such as uh, uh, Radio Azadi, uh, BBC, and some other uh, radio uh, links too that I, I was participating due to women participation for the peace negotiation. Uh, as I mentioned, I have written different article about women, which has a lot of uh, reactions. And most of the time, even people uh, uh, on that time, they threatened me somehow they deal with me, which was not acceptable for the woman, but I was never uh, uh, silent about it. And I was always active in defense from my things and from my position over there. After the uh, fall of the uh, uh, governments in Afghanistan, uh, all, as you know, all the people were escaped from Afghanistan, I was, I was waiting in Afghanistan up to uh, 20, uh, 21st, of, 21st of August. Any international organization or any international media that they wanted to talk with some woman, most of the people pointed to me that I should talk with this media. So I was the one that uh, suddenly I was talking with one of the a Spanish journalist that she was looking to the some activist woman to talk with her and know about the woman situation, which was uh, uh, like a good chance for me that she uh, saved my life. That I am uh, today I am alive. Otherwise, on that day, if I was not taken out from Afghanistan or from my house, I was killed by Taliban because after me, seventeen uh, friend of me killed by Taliban. Dif the different time they were killed. I was the happy person that I was leave Afghanistan and I come in here. When I come in here, I was not settling silent. Before uh, I leave Afghanistan, I with my uh, most suffering, I was decide to uh, organize some protests against the Taliban. But luckily I was leave the country. I did not uh, cut off my relation with the people in Afghanistan. When I was arriving here, I was active with them through WhatsApp. And we organized a protest uh, that uh, uh, luckily we, we conduct that, uh, that protest, which they also print my phone number and, uh, and that. And then also I was not sitting in here in Spain too. I'm really happy and thankful from the Spanish people that they supported me in each protests that, that I was conducting in Salamanca when I was there. I conduct many, uh, many different uh, protests for the supporting of Afghanistan and also to uh, like stop uh, or ban the Taliban. And after Hello, that, Masuda. just Masuda. one thing I finished. Okay, okay. Just, 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 just making the point, just to be brief. Okay, so we allow 
I mean, you will, I'm sure we'll have the opportunity to ask the question, but we have to give them some time. Um, go ahead, finish. Okay, just one thing I want to say that after that, uh, uh, whenever the Amnistia International had kind of uh, conference in different place of Spain, uh, they are invited me. Uh, today, I also have after that, mini, meet, uh, that meeting, I have a meeting with the Galicia International colleagues. They are going to invite me and we are negotiate which date is possible for me that I should leave uh, Barcelona to Galicia. So that is things that I was I want to, to say. And currently also in last week, uh, because there was no one in uh, Barcelona, I'm not familiar, I was a start kind of protest like a uh, individually protest, uh, and I uh, uh, published that video too. That is it. If there is any question because of the time limitation, I respect that to speak so shortly. Thank you so much. Thank you. So thank you very much. I think now is the moment where we open the floor for a uh, conversation with all the public here today. There are only two rules that we try to, to follow when having this conversation. The first one is if you want to, to say a comment, question, whatever you want to ask or comment, you have to present yourself first briefly. And the interventions are uh, about uh, one minute. No, it shouldn't take longer than a minute so we can have more people uh, talking, okay? So anybody that would like to start? Or also online there are some, but I think Ismail, yeah. Hello, I'm Ismail Sadek. Uh, I am I'm working currently here in ITD and uh, I also be be belong to the Moroccan community of Spain. And uh, you talked about your life here and about some of the difficulties like finding a job or finding a house. And uh, I was wondering if, uh, if, if uh, one of these difficulties is the role pl played b b by the, the local communities. Uh, I will make it in a question like, what should be the role uh, of Spanish people uh, to f facilitate your uh, life here in, in, in Madrid? And also what should be the role of other migrant co communities like M Moroccans or, or I don't know, or, or other Muslim uh, co co communities? Thank you. Maybe we can gather another question before uh, somebody, anybody? If not online, there was a question, you said? No, okay. No, if not, we go directly to this question, yeah? Okay. Oh, thank you, thank you for the question. Um, I mean, there are many things that a Spanish society can do, not only in terms of uh, accommodation or employment, and, and I would like briefly as well to introduce, there are many colleagues here who is actually supporting Afghan refugees, some of them, through different means, uh, and some of them purely like social accompaniment of, of these colleagues, helping them integrating in this country. And I think the Spanish society has done tremendous work in that sense, and, and, and I think they can probably state that better. Um, the issue about renting a house, it has to do more with some uh, issues that had with the, probably with the government or the local administration. I mean, currently the uh, renting, um, uh, situation in Spain or especially Madrid is very complicated. Maybe if some of you actually have suffered, not even being Afghan. So con considering being an Afghan, not having a, a, a contract, I've been extremely complicated to have a contract and, and also naming yourself a, a refugee, obviously that uh, creates a lot of tension among locals. Uh, I don't think it has to do anything with uh, prejudice or even racism or anything like that. It's just a, a lot of, I mean, a, a lot of fear, uh, normal fear. Um, we've been requesting government as well to be more supportive of these refugees that are actually under the asylum seeking program and that usually lasted between 18 to 24 uh, months uh, to at least to provide some kind of a backup or, or uh, uh, 
not only economic assistance, but some kind of a backup in terms of like providing some kind of guarantee uh, uh, for refugees to look for a house. And that will certainly uh, uh, improve or is their situation. Uh, maybe also local authorities can do that. And of course, I mean, the society, um, as well, if they have an option or possibility, I mean, as we have in some places, they have uh, uh, really trust them and, and being able to rent them. Uh, but it's true that currently is very complicated for anyone. So for them, even more complicated. Um, I would like as well to take advantage, and, and there are many people here, and not only Sunita, myself, and Wajia, and Najiba, which is presently here, was working for the Spanish government on the gender program. Uh, uh, in case you also want to ask her some questions, as it was actually herself before uh, uh, not having an easy time looking at some of the pictures that we saw uh, from Kabul Airport. She came through Kabul Airport after spending a few terrible days, the same as Wajiha. Uh, uh, Wajiha's family, and Hamida is also uh, on the back, I mean, and, and who also came through Kabul. Uh, and there are also many wonderful Spanish colleagues. Uh, Maite Pacheco was the director general of, of the asylum seeking program. And she actually was the one organizing the whole Torrejon uh, uh, program and currently supporting voluntarily uh, and almost on her complete time to Afghan colleagues. Uh, uh, Carola was another colleague of mine working in Afghanistan along with me and supporting. And, and there are some colleagues also from which is a group of uh, uh, communities supporting Afghan throughout Spain. Uh, one of the issues about Afghan refugees is that very much spread out, and some of them actually don't even have a, a local Afghan contact to refer to. And, and obviously being a, very away from your country, your culture, your society, and being, uh, uh, being alone in a small city, I mean, or a small town, is really complicated. So sometimes just uh, uh, regular Spanish, which actually there are many, uh, going to them and just uh, trying to help them integrate in their communities has been very good, but it is not always possible and that's not always easy. Thank you. There are two other interventions, one from Dalia and another one from Fernanda online. So let's go first, uh, Dalia, and then we gather the other question. Hi, my name is Dalia. I am a colleague of Sunita and Hasib in Smart and City, along with the rest of the team. And my question is about your children and your family, because I see for what you have um, said and what we know from you, that normally the children have an easier integration in school. And as it was said, um, they tend to have an easier um, and even uh, beautiful experience, if I use the word that was already said. So... Is, do you think that there is a way that through the children's integration, this gap that women are experimenting of not having an easy integration into this society could be fostered? Is it possible to follow their uh, channel of integration through the children, more for Sunita or any of the women who is who are here? Uh, I would like uh, Ms. Najiba to share her experience. And after that, I will uh, comment because she has her uh, children going to school. And Najiba, uh, I know that I have a lot of people who are in the school. I have a lot of people who are in the school. I have a lot of people who are in the school. I have a lot of people who are in the school. I have a lot of people who are in the school. I have a lot of people who are in the school. I have a lot of people who are in the school. I have a lot of نجیب احمدی کارمند سابق بخش آیسی در رای آقای اگناسو اینا کار کردم و وی مطابق به سوال از اینا این خیلی تاثیر مثبت مگذاره امی طفل من که بچه من 11 ساله هسته به مکتب هسته او به محیط اجتماع کده طفلای اسپانهی دیگه صحبت میکنه به مکتب میره وقتی که امرو از اونا ما به بازار به یا به یک محیط دیگه به محیط ترن به محیط میترو یا به محیط بازار میریم برای خریداری و اینا تاثیر مثبت برای در قسمت این تاثیر مثبت داره و چیزایی که ما نمیفهمیم اما طفل برای ما ترجمه میکنه میگه مادر مثلا ای دکاندار ای چیز میگه نام از نام اشیایی که ما میخوایم خریداری کنیم 
نامو امو اشیا را برای ما میگیره یا امو چیزی را که میخوایم خریداری کنه یا کسی از ما یک چیز میپرسه طفل ما جواب از او را میده همی برای ما یک تاثیر مثبت داره و ما میتونیم از طفلا خو زودتر یاد بگیریم و در جامعه اسپانیا ادغام شویم نجیبه احمدی Yes, life of our children affects in our life it has a very positive effect. Um, for example, my son that has 11 years old uh, can speak Spanish very well because he learned at the school. And whenever I'm going with him at the supermarket or to buy some things, uh, it translates for me. And it's very, it facilitates my life. And uh, I can, and also I can learn Spanish from my children in house. It's, it's uh, as a very positive effect. Uh, that's, yeah. Uh, sharing my experience, uh, I have a daughter of two years old. Uh, she starts speaking in here when we came. She, she is going to kindergarten. And she's fluent in Spanish and English rather than my native language, which is Dari. In, uh, my, in our language, we don't have articles. So always when I speak in Spanish, I eat it. So my, my daughter is here to teach me, no mama, la mesa, no mesa, no mama, ese el león. So. She, 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 she is the one uh, who is uh, teaching me uh, the articles. And about the integration, I must say, uh, I, I found uh, two good friends uh, through my daughter, which is the mother of other two kids who are uh, with my daughter in one kindergarten. And we are weekly, uh, two or three days in a week, we are going to the park with the kids. And in there, uh, I'm, I'm responding them in English and they are speaking with me in Spanish uh, to, to more uh, help me to uh, get integrated in the society. And about the education system, uh, we, 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 it, the education system of Afghanistan is completely different from here. So they are the one who helped me to look for the college for my daughter. We, we have a lot of problem finding scholarship, doing homologation of our uh, degrees. So through our kids, which are going to the school and kindergarten, it become more easier for us to integrate. As Najiba said, when, when we are out and someone is asking something from us, uh, before we respond, our kids are responding to their question or to their needs. Thank you. Now let's go to the online uh, question. We have three people that want to uh, share their ideas, comments. Let's uh, go first with Fernanda. Yes, thank you. Um, well, my name is Fernanda. I work for UNHCR. It's the UN Refugee Agency. I am based in Madrid. Uh, so I work in the, in the Spanish territory. And uh, first of all, I just wanted to, to congratulate Sunita and uh, the rest of the team for the work done. Um, it, is, it is really amazing that in this short time you have been able to fund uh, a new brand new association of uh, Afghan women here in, in Spain. Um, on the one hand, I, I if I understood well, I think you're based in Madrid too, but uh, I wanted to make sure about that. And I was wondering where the rest of the, the women uh, linked to the association are based, if they are based in other areas in Spain. And uh, on the other hand, I also wanted to share a little bit of uh, the work uh, that UNHCR is, is doing with uh, associations led by refugees in Spain, because it, it might be of interest for you to, to join and um, to, to be in touch, basically. Uh, because as uh, Sunita was saying before, it is not only about uh, food and about shelter, but um, constructing these networks and these social safety nets, it's uh, really, really important to guarantee the, the integration of uh, refugees and uh, other immigrants in Spain. So um, basically, we are working towards uh, identifying associations as uh, 
this Afghan Women Association you have created to try and understand what your challenges and the opportunities you see uh, for other uh, refugees in Spain are, and to try to support that work in, in different terms. So uh, that is also an invitation to, to maybe meet uh, in the near future. Thank you. Thank you, Fernanda. Uh, let's go now with Marisa. Okay, my question. I'm sorry I'm not um, setting my image because I have a um, problem with data um, on the mobile. So I will only be talking. Um, my question is about the organization itself. What is the main purpose or the purposes that you are uh, planning or which actions um, do you achieve or you plan to do in the organization? and um, how to contact other Afghan women in Spain from other cities, if you plan to do these contacts or, or join more people, more, more women. Thank you, Marisa. Let's take the last uh, question or comment from Atefa and then we get back here to the, to the room for, for Sunita. Uh, Atefa? Vale, uh, salam. Metan Farsi Sobat. Yes, please go. Vale, metan it for Farmai. Vale, salam. Khidmat Shuma and Agai Ignacio. Sual may but ke ma tariban khodam atifa Mahmudi asom hamudat aft ma misa ke walad Espanya shudem. Ay ke ba family ko in di zindagi mukanim dashar salamanka. سوال اصلی ما بود که از خود آقای اگنسیو که ما به امید ما تقریبا خودم و جوانای شبی خود ما تقریبا شرایط مشابه که داریم یه که نمیتونیم وارد پروسه تحصیلات اسپانیا شیم یعنی به تحصیلات عالی را پیدا نمیتونیم ای که از ما میخواین که باید پروسه هوملگسیون پیش, پیش برم ولی املگاسیون وقتی که با سوشال ورکر خو صحبت میکنیم اونا میگن که تا حال از سال 2000 از سال پار که هر چی افغان آمده و اونا درخواست املگاسیون داده از اونا تا حال هیچ این کارشون عملی نشده و ای که امکان داره که این یک چیز غیر ممکن باشه و اصلا ما راه پیدا نکنیم من خودم محصل دانشکده طب بودم در ولایت دو تا از برادرایم هم سال چهارمشان بود ولی نظر به شرایط که پیش آمد نتونستن ادامه بدن ولی ما که آمدیم اینجا به امید از که بتونیم تحصیلات خواهی ادامه بدیم ولی این رقم که مشخصه ای که ما نمیتونیم ادامه بدیم ای که آیا املگسیان صورت میگیره یا نه یک امیدواری چیزی باشه Uh, we are moving forward or yeah, yeah. thank you it, yeah. yeah she she just uh, uh, explained that it has been seven months that she came to spain uh, and uh, she was a medical student back in afghanistan currently she wants to continue her education here in spain but the problem is it, the with the emulgation of her degree she asked from the social workers uh, from the host NGO that are helping them And they have said that the people, the refugee who came uh, on uh, August 2021, still their degree haven't been homologated. So it's a long, long procedure that we cannot help you in this. So she just asked this association if we could help them uh, through this process that she will be able to continue her education here in Spain. Yes, well, some comments responding as well, the previous questions. Uh, thank you, Fernanda. Um, the association is based here, um, but he obviously is trying to reach the rest of the Afghan women in the, in, in the country. Uh, currently there are 16, but there are many more actually willing to join very soon. Uh, and, and also responding to, and I'm sure, I mean, we will, I mean, I already met Fernanda and I think Sunita as well, so we'll, Um, so they will be very happy to for Sunita and some of the other colleagues which are presently uh, currently in Madrid to meet with you uh, or I mean, maybe with other colleagues also online. Uh, there are also other members of the association that are on other parts. Masura was from Barcelona. There are 
a few other ones, you know, in other towns, um, yeah, in Galicia, Salamanca as well, and Manresa. Um, and responding to Marisa, um, most of the app, this is an idea that comes also from a big group that Sunita was talking before though, in WhatsApp, which is currently uh, hosting around 200 females. Uh, that's the main uh, way for them to communicate and, and to spread out the word. So uh, obviously there will be an invitation to all the women to join. Uh, and, and you were also asking about the goals. I mean, Sunita presented them before. I mean, currently this is only a way for them to convene and to work together and to learn from each other and especially to accompany each other uh, with their own traditions and with their own culture and try to also uh, together uh, bring their own voices in front of the current authorities in terms of some of the challenges that they're facing. Um, uh, they experience that most of the time they've been going individually asking for help, but obviously they are most, uh, uh, all of them suffering the kind of the same challenges. So uh, this is a way as well to convene their voice into one uh, association. Um, but of course, I mean, the, the war has been already spread out to most of the networks of African women and, and all of them will be much willing or much, uh, obviously, uh, hopefully, I mean, most of them can join this group. Okay, we have space for one last question, uh, Celia. Hello, good afternoon. I'd like to say um, congratulations to all uh, this group of people who are actively uh, trying to create the association and supporting this kind of great operation leaded by Ignacio and Clara and so many people. And uh, there are some professors online who couldn't uh, come to this event and they are really very engaged with uh, refugee population through different uh, platforms uh, leaded by the, this center in which you are. So uh, it would be nice um, if you, uh, well, both Ignacio, but the, also the, um, the association can leave your contacts. So these people, uh, one of them, Juana, for example, is in Oxford now, but uh, she is uh, willing to contact you to share uh, well, their previous research because they, they've been um, conducting some research uh, here in Spain around the um, um, housing um, for refugees. And uh, among these refugees were some Afghan people. So maybe uh, they can share some thoughts with you. And of course, may, uh, maybe some uh, new projects can <laughs> be imagined. I don't know, but well, so congratulations. You forgot to introduce yourself, by the way. You forgot to introduce yourself. Well, I'm Celia, I'm professor here, and I, I know all these uh, people uh, because I've been in touch with them. Thank you, thank you, Celia. Okay. Um, just, I don't know. I, will, I mean, now that Celia was speaking, I would like to just make a few brief uh, comments at the end. And first of all, thanking ITD for this opportunity, and and which is great. Uh, oh, well, just some brief remarks before giving the micro to uh, Sunita. Just would like to thank ITD and Carlos Mateus and also the rest of the team for allowing us for this event, which is wonderful. Um, I mean, and I think this is wonderful and it's a great hope for all of them, especially all the females. Uh, when Celia was speaking right now, uh, and this is a very important story because Celia was one of the uh, Spanish colleagues actually accompanying a, a family. This family was actually based in CAR, Center for Assistance of Refugees in Alcobenda. Some of you are involved with refugees, you may know. That family actually returned back to Afghanistan. Considering everything that they're going through, they return back to Afghanistan. And why they return back to Afghanistan? Because our society and the center itself, and, and uh, it was not able to integrate, especially the female. The female was struggling tremendously. The wife of, of was actually a former worker of us. Uh, and, and even though actually the kids were doing great in school, that was a terrible story. Uh, but she could, I mean, she was actually, they were, I mean, she was going also into psychology, but she was struggling with the language and, and she wouldn't, she didn't have her own space because the car is not actually not an easy place. And they ended up actually some escaping, actually escaping back to Afghanistan. Considering everything that we see in Afghanistan, that is nothing better than that. I mean, the situation in Afghanistan is not easy, uh, but for them it was more important to, and actually that was the point actually with some of us actually, and 
and start thinking about the Afghan women because most of the time we think about refugees, but Afghan women really struggle here uh, because of the uh, uh, some of the issues. I mean, societal issues. I mean, and integrating their own culture and 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 that was not the only story. There's a few other stories of uh, terrible times, and many actually Afghan women uh, really struggling and going through psychological depression, anxiety, and other issues. I mean, uh, I think right now we've been counting here with some wonderful. Uh, examples which are somehow the success, but there are many other colleagues which are currently struggling, and this is the main goal of this association for all of them to help each other, and it, which it actually has been very supportive to most of them. Uh, so anyhow, that was uh, thank you, Thelia, for sharing and also for that work, and I think that was the story actually who brought us uh, the need of this uh, a group for all of them to work together. And, as Ignacio said, the, the idea of creating this association was to help each other to make the uh, Afghan women protagonist of their own problem and their own integration. Uh, I'm in contact with uh, a lot of women that they are uh, they are ready uh, to go back to Afghanistan even by walk. They are saying that uh, in Afghanistan, we will be killed directly by the Taliban and here we are dying gradually day by day. Because the, as I said, the culture are different, the language is different, especially for the uh, elders uh, who are uh, not uh, more in the society, in the community, and the Spanish classes that they are taking are in, for some people it's more advanced and for some people uh, it's not sufficient. Most of the people who are in the centers, in the hostels, they are having uh two to three hours spanish class in a week which is not sufficient for uh, them and th this was the idea to create this association uh i was fortunate that i had uh, a good uh, contact of friends who introduced me to carlos to miguel uh, I, I must say Miguel was the one who find me apartment to move from Sam uh, Salamanca. I was sharing an apartment with three uh, families. Uh, one was Afghan family and the other was uh, uh, Russian family. Uh, same like that, we have, uh, say my experience, there are a lot of women who are sharing rooms, who are sharing uh, kitchens, which is uh, for Afghan culture, it's something uh, totally unacceptable but uh, and the other challenge that we are is, uh, we were facing from the host uh, NGOs uh, they were not trained to uh, receive this huge amount of uh, refugee in the same time and political refugees as you know we we have we came here to save our life we were political refugees and they were trained to host uh, social refugees who came for a better life the purpose of uh, good income, a good lifestyle uh, to spend. And they were treating us the same equally uh, as our needs are different, our demands were different, but uh, the reality is something totally different. Uh, as Ismail said, we have different uh, communities. Uh, what uh, is the main purpose of having the session here in ITD was that because we are having students, we are having uh, professors from different countries, different backgrounds, that they could help uh, our integration make easier uh, here. So we appreciate your support. Uh, and we are here to learn about your experience of integration that will help us to get into society and to move for a better uh, future here. And one, one final request, sorry, yes, sorry. Apart from thanking ITD for this event, actually we'd like to take follow the work of Thelia about professors. Uh, one of the ways of integration is actually work or, uh, but also education. There are many Afghan women, uh, many actually Afghan young uh, women, youngsters, I mean, 18, 19, 20, as Atefa was saying before, that they have not been able to engage into school or into university. Getting to university, the public university is extremely complicated. I mean, for Afghan homologated and things like that. So I would like to continue asking the university, uh, the UPM, uh, and professors to also support this uh, this group, which are actually very much willing actually to learn and to contribute. I mean, there are wonderful people, most of them actually with very uh, high skills. I mean, as Sunita and they only need an opportunity and nothing better than education in university or 
Sometimes it even doesn't have to be a formal education. I mean, it can be sometimes some uh, more informal courses or non uh, non official degrees. Uh, that sometimes it's easier for them, but I think that's one of the best opportunities and, and for them to integrate. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Sunita, Ignacio, and all the association for choosing the ITD for presenting the, the association. Uh, we wish you the, the best and we will keep in touch for sure too. And you know that anything uh, you can see, we could help or support, uh, count on us. And just to close, because we are a bit late, I would like to invite you all to the hall. We have some coffee and snacks where we can continue the, the conversation if you want. So thank you very much. Thank you very much also to the people online. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Have a nice evening. Goodbye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.